But getting back to wholeness, the fact of the matter is that even ordinary things, such as a chair, as you say, receives its wholeness from the center of that icon. This is something mind-boggling, because when we speak of this eternal realm, the realm of platonic ideas, what have you, it sounds so mystical, so mysterious, which it is, uh, granted that. But it is also a fact that uh, the everyday things that we know and deal with in our ordinary life receive their actual reality from that central point, that eternal realm, uh, call it whatever you will. And this is something that is, in principle, inaccessible to the physicist. The physicist, if I were talking now to a physicist, he might well say, I have no idea what you're talking about. Because as a physicist, he, one cannot conceive of that wholeness. Because the way the physicist understands anything that he thinks he understands, the way he understands is by decomposing something into parts. Ultimately, they are sort of atomic parts. But this, even in classical physics, the, the, the modus operandi of physics is based upon cutting things up into little pieces. Uh, it's, it's amazing how much actual empirical knowledge you can get that way. I mean, all of our technology is based upon it. So I'm, I'm not saying that there is an invalidity here. No, there's not an invalidity. There is just a limitation. There are things that can be understood that way, but they are, there are also other things which actually are of prime importance that cannot. So wholeness precedes parts. And the, the cosmos is not just an assembly of, of entities. It is a hierarchy. There's a verticality. There's a vertical order which uh, we humans should understand because there is that vertical order in ourselves. We have the corporeal nature, we have the psychic nature, and above the psychic we, we have a spiritual nature, call it what you will. It is precisely in the arts that this wholeness plays a key role. Uh, I have often in, in my writing and trying to explain these things to, uh, to a general audience, referred to music especially, to indicate the integral wholeness of a musical composition. Uh, it's, it's not just an assembly of notes, there's a wholeness there. And I often quote to people something that Mozart said, Mozart confided once to a friend, that an entire symphony comes into my mind all at once, as one thing. And then it may take him weeks and weeks to unpack it into the scores for the different instruments and so on and the different movements. But the point is that a real symphony, uh, say, is more than the parts, more than the notes. And uh, this is, of course, why it's beautiful and why we uh, sense very deep meaning in it. But the point is that this wholeness precedes the division. So the point is not only that the physicist cannot understand everything, but the point is that what he can understand is, so to speak, the bottom of things. And this, has, of course, has had a tremendous cultural impact upon the contemporary Western civilization because the dominant force in contemporary Western civilization is science, and the basic science is physics. So the fact, that, the fact is that modern Western culture has, as it were, uh, eliminated all the higher levels of being and uh, I mean we've become sort of uh, creatures of the mud. We're crawling around on the earth thinking that's all there is. So the blessed thing about modern physics is that nobody really believes it. I'm sure that no parent uh, when it uh, holds its child thinks that it's holding a bunch of molecules. I mean not even the physicists go that far. But yet, in a sense, that would be the logical consequence. So the reason uh, we founded this foundation, Philosophia Initiative Foundation, is because we recognize that this reductionism of contemporary science is uh, not only wrong, but it is uh, dangerous. It is destructive of all higher culture. 
I mean, uh, it, it, it really shows the resilience of mankind that it has been able to withstand that absolutely poisonous philosophy coming in the name of science and still retain its humanity with, with all the, the limitations that we see daily. We are still human beings and that's, that's a marvel because if we would fully believe what quote-unquote science tells us these days, we would be ipso facto dehumanized. So you see, uh, what we have to say and what we want to distribute far and wide is not only a, a philosophy of physics, which has technical things to say, but we are interested in the cultural implications. And it's nothing short of turning the world right side up again. We're living in, a, in, a, in an upside-down world.